this session on uh, ocular oncology. Basically, the idea of this session is to uh, find out the subtle signs which is, uh, which is going to help us all diagnose the ocular tumors at an early stage. So uh, the, this course aims to cover the eyelid tumors, the ocular surface tumors, orbital tumors, and the intraocular tumors, essentially focusing on the early signs which is going to uh, help us in detecting them early. So I'm going to talk about the eyelid tumors, and uh, Dr. Vikas Menon will talk on the ocular surface tumors. Dr. Anirban Bhaduri is going to talk on the orbital tumors, and Dr. Santosh will be talking on the intraocular tumors. So eyelid tumors will know, ha can have, it, it, it's a huge classification system. There are a lot of different structures in the eye eyelid, and the tumors can practically arise from any of these layers of the eyelid. So we get to see most of them in our practice. Many of them are benign lesions, but there can be some which can actually be malignant out of those benign things. So essentially, they can be epidermal, stromal lesion from the adenoxyl structures of the eyelid and also from the muscles and the neurovascular structures of the eyelid. This, these are the areas where tumors can arise in the eyelid. So why it is important to know of the subtle signs which is going to help us in detecting them early is uh, something like this, which actually looks very ominous, looks like quite malignant, is actually a benign lesion. So this is basically a benign melanocytic nevi, which can be extensive, whereas something which looks very benign, very small, is actually malignant tumors. So if you do not detect them correctly, if you are not able to identify them correctly, we will obviously be, will not be able to manage them correctly, and the outcomes are not going to be good for our patients. And also, <clears throat> if untreated, they can become something like this. Very extensive tumors can spread to the whole of the body, can be metastatic, and ultimately, can be uh, as uh, the mortality can be there like any other tumors of the body. So it's important to suspect and detect these tumors early. So we'll be talking out about certain subtle signs which are going to help us in detecting them at an early stage. So we all know about these kind of lesions. These are what? These are the basically the keratin horns and basically the small squamous papillomas, which we see very often in the elderly patients, the skin of the elderly patients, right? So what about this? This also looks like a keratin horn, a lot of dead material on the lesion. But how is it different from a normal keratin horn? Is it very, something which is a little different here? It is pigmented, and more important is look at the base. It has a base, which should not be there in a keratin horn. It, the keratin horn should arise directly from the skin, should not have something, you know, localized sort of, discoid sort of lesion at the base. And there is a slight pulling of the eyelid. It looks like as if there is a little cicatricial change. There is some tethering of the eyelid skin which is happening. So this is definitely not a normal keratin horn. And why is it important to differentiate between the two is that if we have to biopsy this lesion, if we have to excise this lesion, this lesion has to go for histopath. <clears throat> Sometimes normal keratin horns, we just excise them and don't send it for histopath. But this lesion needs to go for histopath. And specifically, we have to probably do a wide excision uh, for this lesion because this can be a keratin horn which is arising from a squamous cell carcinoma because of the ex exuberant uh, proliferation of the cells which happens. Right, so biopsy of the ba base is important, and if you detect a squamous cell carcinoma, you have to go back again and treat it like any other malignant tumor of the eyelid. So look at the base of the lesion, especially in kind of you know, lesions like this, it's important. <coughs> what about this? Again, an elderly gentleman, a long-standing lesion, the, the couple of small satellite things like here, what does it look like? Kind of. It's a very papillary sort of surface, pigmented, but otherwise the surface looks to be, there is no breakdown of the surface, it's just that it's kind of you know, a little bumpy, it's a little papillary. Not causing any distortion of the lid margin, the eyelashes are a little distorted, probably because it's involving the anterior lid margin, otherwise they are okay. So what does it look like? We see it very frequently in elderly patients. So this is basically a seboric keratosis, kind of a greasy sort of, you know, stuck on sort of appearance, right? So what about this? Does it look like the same or this is a little different than the previous one? This is also a pigmented lesion. This is also near the lid margin. This is also fairly well defined. But what's different, uh, this is the HIMAC photograph. What is different from the previous lesion is the surface. It, it's not a papillary surface like what was there in the previous one. It's a little lumpy, bumpy kind of surface, kind of lobulated surface, very shiny, pearly kind of surface. And there is this area of breakdown here where the surface seems to have an ulceration which should not be there in a normal kind of seboric keratosis or any other benign lesion. And again, it has a base. It's not a stuck on kind of thing. It seems to have something on the base, and on top of it, this pigmented area is there. So this is a basal cell carcinoma. It starts off as early. It can kind of, you know, when it starts off, it can be something like this, and obviously over a period of time, it's going to grow. So it's again important to detect it 
by looking at the surface, if there is any surface breakdown, breakdown if there is any ulceration or any irregularity, it can actually be a basal cell carcinoma in a pigmented lesion like this, and not a simple nevus or a squamous <coughs> seborrheic keratosis. So these are the morphological variants of BCC that we see, the ulcerative variant, the cystoid variant, and this is one rare variant where, uh, you know, you see a very flat kind of lesion, but there are a lot of cicatricial changes around it, and some these patients can land up with kind of eyelid margin changes, atropian, and all those things. So what about this gentleman? He had a history of trauma. Somebody detected it to be having a cicatricial atropian post-trauma, and he was actually sent for a skin graft to correct the <coughs> retraction or the atropian, whatever. Okay, so does it look like an atropian or a retraction post-traumatic? And all these changes were supposed to attributed to the trauma which he had. Which he had. <coughs> so he, there are kind of, you know, the whole lid margin is destroyed, the eyelids pulled down, there seems to be a lot of scarring here, but what is important here is look at the edges. They are like, you know, pigmented, they're pearly, that's, they're rolled in, what we classically see in the basal cell carcinoma. So it's not necessary they will always present like a lump or a tumor. It can be very subtle, diffuse like this, but the pigmentation, the rolled in edges, the ulceration is going to give us a clue that it's actually basal cell carcinoma. So this was basically the sclerosing variant of BCC, the morphia form variant, what we call it, okay? So this one, the previous, uh, the first slide that we saw here. So this gentleman had a calasian which has been excised twice, the same site, and every time it comes back after a couple of months. So we know what it is. A recurrent calasian coming back at the same site, a yellowish looking lesion like this is obviously a sebaceous gland carcinoma at a very early stage, <coughs> right? So the color gives us a clue here. There is thickening of the lid margin. It seems to be distorted. There are a couple of irregularity of the eyelashes. Some loss of eyelashes are also there. There is no ulceration here just because the tumor is probably at a very early stage. If it's going to grow, then the ulceration and other changes are going to come over. So this is a very early sebaceous gland carcinoma and if you treat it at this stage, detect it and treat it at this stage, the prognosis is very, very good, right? So loss of eyelashes, lid margin thickening, and recurrent collision at the same site. All this which should let us kind of think in line of sebaceous gland carcinoma. So in fact, in a small study, what we did during our fellowship, 20% of the cases for, of sebaceous gland carcinoma, the referral diagnosis was actually a collision. And in about one third of the cases, uh, just about uh, in one third of the cases, the correct referral diagnosis was made by the person who has referred the patient. So there are a lot of kind of you know, masquerading, a lot of atypical variant in sebaceous gland carcinoma. Another lady, elderly lady comes with this picture. She has been treated for a couple of months for blepharoconjunctivitis, has been given um, you know, antibiotic steroid combination, hot fermentation, lubricants, topical steroid, not responding at all, the same picture. So do you think of anything else here? This is a HIMAC picture. So what does it look like? It's a diffusely inflamed ocular surface, the lid margins are inflamed, the posterior lid margin is kind of rounded. But what is important here is to note this yellowish kind of thickening here and also loss of diffuse, loss of eyelashes. So this is not a diffuse, normal blepharoconjunctivitis which we usually see. And also it's an unilateral presentation. The other eye seems to be you know, absolutely fine. So this is again something which, is raise, which should raise a suspicion. So this is what you call as a pagetoid variant of sebaceous gland carcinoma, which again presents like a diffuse thickening of the ocular surface of the lid margin, diffuse inflammation without any visible lump or a tumor on the surface or of the eyelid. So any persistent unilateral blepharoconjunctivitis which is not responding to your conventional treatment, we must biopsy and rule out a pegetoid sebaceous gland carcinoma, right? And when you plan to do a biopsy, uh, what we do is something known as a MAP biopsy, where basically you really don't know where exactly the tumor is, so you take multiple bits of conjunctiva from whole of the ocular surface, about 16 bits, spread it out on a filter paper, you number them, mark them, and send it to the pathologist. So the pathology should be able to tell, okay, this number 14 or 15 or, you know, 4 is positive for kind of, you know, the, for tumor cells. You see those tumor cells within the epithelium, and then based on the amount of the involvement of the ocular surface, you decide on your treatment plan. If more than about two or three quadrant of the ocular surface is involved, these patients sometimes have to go, ahead, go in for an exenteration. Another lady who was again sent with a diagnosis of ptosis. She has a mild upper lid ptosis in the right eye, and it was thought that she has an aponeurotic ptosis. She does have an aponeurotic ptosis, looks like a little high lid crease, mild ptosis, good LPS action. So what the referral uh, doctor probably missed was to evert the eyelid and see the conjunctiva inside. Okay, so again a sebaceous gland carcinoma, which essentially is coming from the conjunctival surface, spreading diffusely, not causing a nodular kind of mass, and causing this mechanical ptosis. 
So in all cases of acquired ptosis of unknown etiology, please revert and examine the lead. You can have a lot of things lying in the phonics or in the you know, inner surface of the eyelid which can give a clue to the diagnosis. These are the normal morphological variant. We all know this is sebaceous. We all know this is sebaceous. But yeah, something like this we need to be kind of you know, suspicious of to kind of uh, diagnose it early. So another girl, she's a young girl. She's a college-going girl. Her main problem was she was to get this persistent redness, recurrent redness, irritation of the eyes. So she was diagnosed as an allergic conjunctivitis, was on steroid for some time, not much relief. The eye used to get white in between, and again it used to come back. And she also used to get those recurrent hemorrhages of the conjunctiva. And when you look at the conjunctiva, this is how it was. So it was thought that it's an allergic conjunctivitis, probably an adenoviral or with some areas of hemorrhage. Do you think it could be something else? The same picture was there in the other eye. Does it look like a normal kind of conjunctiva, normal appearing conjunctiva? This is a little higher mag picture. Looks like papilla, right? If she was a contact lens wearer, if it was in the upper lid, then probably you could have thought of something like a GPC. But it's in the lower, lower lid, it's bilateral, she's not a contact lens user. And there are little areas of resolving hemorrhage here. So can it be something else? So this basically turned out to be an amyloid when we did the biopsy. We thought it's something, it doesn't look like a normal allergic conjunctivitis, papillary follicular or a papillary conjunctivitis, so we decided to go ahead with the biopsy. So on biopsy, it turned out to be conjunctival amyloid involving the palpable conjunctiva of the eyelid. So recurrent hemorrhages, same side or maybe different side without any cause, and if you see a very pale, waxy kind of appearance of the conjunctiva, so this is how a conjunctival amyloidosis presents like. So this is the typical appearance, like once we see it in the clinic, we'll never forget this appearance, right? And sometimes they can actually masquerade like a sebaceous lung carcinoma. And many of them are detected as sebaceous lung carcinoma, but they are conjunctive amyloidosis. So why it is important to detect it is that um, the implication is beyond the eye. These patients need to be evaluated for a systemic amyloidosis. Many of them can have systemic amyloidosis or they can be part of multiple myeloma, which needs then further treatment. So it's not that all atypical presentation in the eyelid are tumors. There can be some other mas masquerades. It's a reverse masquerade, like other things which look like tumor. Like this gentleman was initially thought of as sebaceous gland carcinoma. Same for this lady. Both of them turned out to be conjunctival and eyelid tuberculosis on biopsy. Similarly, another patient who presented with this diffuse eyelid thickening, some erythema turned out to be in Hansen's on biopsy. So it's not that everything is tumor, but we should know the subtle signs when it can be a tumor. So if I have to summarize, any documented growth in eyelid lesion, any abnormal surface, ulceration, look at the lid margin, any distortion, any loss of eyelashes, any hemorrhage, and any no responses to your conventional treatment. So these are situations where we should suspect that it could be a malignant lesion, and then we should biopsy and treat them accordingly. Thank you.